Hey everyone, this is Brian Funk, and today we're going to make a spooky Halloween theremin instrument. And it sounds like this. And we're going to use Live's wavetable device as well as some other effects that are directly inside of Live. And you're going to be able to download it for free at my website, brianfunk.com. Even if you're not into a theremin instrument, you can still head over to my site. I've got over 200 free live packs as well as some larger packs that you can get. And if you really want to get in on the action, you might consider joining the Music Production Club where your first month is free and you get all kinds of great stuff from me all the time. So let's jump in. The sine wave is going to work well for this. I've also got a harmonic minor scale just... Will get me more in that mood. I'm gonna just raise the attack a little bit on this because the theremin's not gonna have an attack on it. And we'll just give it a little more release. Now we can only play one note at a time on the theremin, so let's make this monophonic. And the real key to the sound is the glide. So we're gonna turn the glide up. Let's try it like. I don't know, around like 150 or so. Now when I use the pressure, I change the waveform a bit and I don't want to do that. So I'm going to turn that off. So we don't want this getting any more buzzy than that. We want to keep the sine wave sound. So we'll get rid of that. Um, we're not going to need to ever move the oscillator position with the mod wheel, so I'm just double-clicking on that to get rid of that, too. What I do want is some vibrato. So I'm going to use the LFO to affect the pitch. So let's just see what we get here. We're getting quite a lot. We'll bring the LFO down maybe quite a bit. And I'm going to speed it up a little bit. Something like that. It's really more than we need, so I'm going to bring this down some. Find just the right amount. Probably want it faster. So I'd like to be able to control all of this with the pressure. So we're going to go to the pressure, and let's bring this up on LFO rate. I'm sorry, let's start with amounts. So as I press down, I bring in that LFO. And if I don't press down much, I get more or less a steady note. And already we're getting really close to this. This is pretty close to the sound we want. We might want to affect the rate with our pressure as well, so I'll just click on the rate, and then I have access to the rate here. That's far too much. You can see how hard I'm pressing down by watching this green bar. It might be hard to tell in the video when I'm pressing, but that green bar will tell you. And it's making this go way too fast. So I'm going to maybe bring this down a bit. not sounding too bad. Bring it down just a little more. A 
lower that rate a little bit. That's This is all stuff you can tweak. Might depend on each song you do, how much you want that all to happen. So the glide time's kind of cool here, but it'd be nice if I can control it. So I'm going to use the mod wheel. I'm going to click on the glide, and that brings it up in our matrix. And then if I use the mod wheel here, let's see what we get. So the mod wheel is all the way down. If I bring it up. It's, it's pretty long. Yeah, it's definitely too long, so it's affecting it too much. So I'm going to bring it down a bit. down. So that might be kind of nice. As I move my mod wheel or my mod strip on the push here, I'm changing the amount of glide time. So it's Pretty quick, I guess about 155 as I bring it up. It takes a little longer. So I think like for the bigger jumps in my melodies, I probably want to raise the uh, glide time a bit. Bring it down. When I'm doing shorter note movements. And that kind of makes sense if you think about the theremin. You got to move your hand more to get to the note. So it's going to take a little bit longer. And if you're doing really close together notes, it's less of a movement. So we'll keep the time shorter. So there's some technique to playing this. Um, I kind of like the way this sounds. So I'm thinking it could use a little bit of reverb. So let's uh, get some hybrid reverb on here. And I'm imagining, I guess, like um, an old sound. It's a very old instrument. Dates back to the 1930s, I think. So... I'm going to look for like a spring reverb in here. And there's definitely that going on with hybrid reverb. Bring this dry wet down a little. So it's very important as you play this that you play in a legato style, meaning when you hit one note and move to the next note, you need to keep that finger down on the previous note so that it creates the glide. Otherwise, you get. And you can't play notes like that on a theremin. So you have to play it legato. We've got this here. Um, it's kind of nice. I'm going to try the vintage mode on here. So again, we're going for vintage. And to me, that's a little too extreme. Extreme. Sounds like I have a bit crusher on it. That's kind of nice. It's kind of fun to hear that popping noise when you switch these vintage sounds. There's something kind of musical about it. When you go down for some reason. Um, I'd actually like to hear that popping sound with some reverb on it as well. Just for the fun of it. Um, I might keep that extra reverb on. Bring out 
the stereo a little. That's kind of fun. So let me play this track again. Down a little. Let's play something on it. cabinet Let's see what we can do with cabinet um to give us again that old sound i'll use a dynamic mic i guess i'm here without these reverbs It adds something to it, kind of like contains it a little. Maybe a little more decay. Let's make this older. Yeah, see that extra fuzz from this vintage mode is cool so that's without it Again, I'm trying to go for that kind of old sound, so I think it makes sense to have that. Uh, let's use let's use the channel EQ just to give it a little love. I just really wanted to cut some of the lows out of that. it helps a little bit um, play the track again playing it very well when I just go to the note you gotta do the legato thing the vibrato is nice to have on here you just press a little bit and you get it. So I want to put this into 
an instrument rack. And I did that by selecting everything. I did that fast. I did Command A, and then Command G, which puts it in the rack. And uh, think about what I want to do with this as far as effects go. Um, I mean, the theremin doesn't really change a lot when you play it. It's kind of the one sound. I guess we can do like some reverb stuff. We don't need reverb all the time for that. So I think I might just put these together for ease of use. Um, we can have the decay time. It's probably a nice one to have. Reverb amount, reverb decay. All I'm doing to map those is right-clicking on the knobs and selecting where I want to map it to. I think that's the easiest way. You can click the map button and then click what you want and click the button over here to map it to it. Um, I think that takes too long. I like to just right-click. Do I want the glide time? I, I kind of, I don't think I do. Um, I thought I was going to map things like glide time, but it's kind of uh, nice with the mod wheel. And it's also really finicky. I don't want to make it such a wide range that you can like kind of mess up the instrument. I think if I have too much control over the glide, I'm going to be able to make it harder to play right. Um, unison just for the heck of it it's probably not gonna take away from the sound I just want to hear it though <laughs> might be a cool knob to have control over um, let's hear some of the different modes shimmer is cool but I think as far as like the actual Theremin sound. I want something that works a little better. No, random note. Is that better than classic? I think that sounds a bit like vibrato to begin with, so it's kind of cool. And as I engaged it by pressing down, we'll do that. We'll call it something fun, though. Uh, maybe like creepiness. I think I like it better without it for as far as the actual theremin goes, but it's kind of fun to have the option. So we want uh, reverb amount. We'll hit tab to go to the next one. Reverb decay. And maybe we want to play with the speaker. I picked 112 because it was already picked for me, but also because I'm, again, picturing this as an old instrument, so a smaller speaker is probably more likely. I don't think there's any reason to make it stereo, do we? Maybe if I use the creepiness. It's too much. Listen to that. Really changes the 
unison when I go to mono on the cabinet compared to when I go stereo, dual. Yeah, that's cool. I'm going to leave that. I like that. So we'll leave that stereo. We'll leave the classic all the way up. Um, we have so far three macros. I'm not really sure how many we really need. I don't even need the filter on. Do we want anything in wavetable accessible? I don't really think so. can always bring this down to four here. So if I'm going to have four, let's give you control over both reverbs independently. So we'll unmap this from two and I'll bring it to three. I'll do the same thing with this one. We'll give them the same decay, three, but this will go to two. And then creepiness, which I'll have to remember to rename, will go to four. And I'll just go in here and we'll say reverb one amounts. Let's say I have over reverb two amounts. And oops, we will have to do that again. Reverb decay. And then this is creep. And we'll give it some nice colors. So purple for that one. Make it some other kind of purple. And the decay. Um, let's make it a darker blue. And then maybe creepiness. That gray there. Or should I do it Halloween colors, maybe? Wouldn't that make sense? Let's do orange. White, black. Looks kind of Halloween, right? And we'll call it BF. Uh, spooky theremin. I put that pre delay up, didn't I? Yep, bring that back down a little bit. It's really noticing the time between the note and then the reverb. Pre delay is cool for making the reverb sound more distant because it takes more time for the sound to hit the reverb almost like a wall that was further away but i don't think that's what we want for this just a little bit but we want more decay time the reverbs add a nice fuzz of just kind of tape hiss almost 
It's not tapis, but it resembles tapis. Well, maybe play our little track again. I think we're getting pretty close. Close it up. Creepy, spooky Halloween theremin. I hope you have fun with it and make some scary music with it. It's fun to make and um, fun to play with. Thanks a lot for watching. Have a good day.